Hello! Thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial and learn more about the advanced features in Practice Web. These features can help you increase productivity and achieve a truly paperless office. The tutorial you're about to watch is a detailed explanation of how to set up individual users and security permissions in Practice Web. In this tutorial, you'll learn adding employees for time clock and security, creating user groups and permissions, adding users and creating passwords, and managing global permissions for all users. Before we actually show you the security settings in Practice Web, you first need to understand that there are three levels of security, network level, computer level, and practice web or software level. Network level and computer level security are set up by your IT professional. This level of security protects your practice from outside intrusion, either by internet access or in-office access by non-employees. Practice web level security protects your office by only allowing certain employees to perform certain tasks like editing patient records or payments. You can visit our website www.practice-web.com and get more information on HIPAA compliance and security features. And of course you can speak with your IT professional about additional security measures that you feel would benefit your practice. In this video, we're going to talk about the software security in Practice Web. Let's get started. The purpose of setting up individual users in Practice Web with their own login password is so you can protect your practice. Embezzlement is a fear for many practice owners, and it helps when you can prevent certain employees from being able to perform certain software functions and track which employees are doing what and from which computer. The audit trail in the Practice Web software can help you with tracking what your employees are doing in the software. To access the audit trail, go to the Tools menu, then Audit Trail. You can restrict access to this tool when setting up your security groups. You can see different functions performed by date range, the permission, which is what employees are allowed to do within Practice Web, and the user. You can also look through specific patients in case there is anything questionable in a particular patient's account. There are also audit trails in the appointment screen. This will allow you to see any changes made to a particular appointment. You can see when the appointment was made, if it was edited or rescheduled. This can all be seen from the appointment audit trail. There's also an audit trail in the insurance plan screen. And there is an audit trail for changes made to procedure notes in the chart module. For example, when a provider has to stop working on a note and then needs to come back and complete the note later, or if a note or procedure is deleted, you can see that in this audit trail. It's important to know you only have the ability to track this in detail if you set up individual users and those users have to log in using a secure password each time they want to use the software. So let's learn how to do that now. Before we start adding users under the security setup, first we need to add our employee names. The purpose of adding the employee names is for effectively setting up the time card security. That way employees can't clock in or out for another member of your team. To add your employee names so your staff can use the time clock, you first go to the list menu, then click on employees. Click the Add button to add in the employee name. 
The payroll ID field is not required, but this can be helpful if you're sending your time card report to a CPA for payroll processing. Once you have added the employee names here, you can now connect them to the respective users for time card security under the setup menu. If you look at this example, we're currently logged in as Sarah. If Sarah were to highlight Amber's name and try to clock her in, Practice Web wouldn't allow it. This is one reason why it is important to set up your user security. The first step in setting up your Practice Web security is to set up your user groups. You can find that by going to the Setup menu. Then, under Security, click on Security Settings. The Security Settings will allow you to see a list of Practice Web users, and when you highlight their name, you can see the rights and privileges they have under the Permissions list. It's important to know that the rights and privileges are based on groups. For example, you can have a back office users, front office users, management and admin users. Anyone assigned to that group will be able to perform the functions that you have a green checkbox next to them. Since staff may change over the course of your practice, you can set up the groups and then just assign the users as you add people to your team. To create a user group, you click on the user groups tab. You can see a couple of examples here, but for training purposes, we'll add a group for back office users. In the lower left, you'll click on the add group button. Type the name of the group in the description field and then click OK to save. You'll see the user group is automatically selected and you have a blank list of user permissions that you can now set for this user group. Please note that if you have, say, seven employees, all with different levels of security, then you'll need to create a different group for each user. You can see any employees that are connected to this group in the column on the right. So if you decide to make any permission changes to this group, all the employees that you see on the right will be affected. Now that you know how to set up the user groups, let's talk about the different permissions a user can have. Many of the permissions you see in this list are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll make sure to highlight certain permissions so you'll have a better idea of who you need to assign these permissions to. The permissions start with the main menu in Practice Web. Typically, the main menu is reserved for admin or manager level staff. But again, based on what you want a particular person to do in the software, you can assign them to an admin group or manager or limited user group and have different abilities based on their user level. The list menu, reports, and tool menus can be assigned to front office users. If these features are something you would like your front desk staff to have access to, specifically when it comes to the reports menu, there are additional levels of security that you can set up. If you put a check mark in the reports box, you can see that you can restrict access to certain aspects of reports. For example, if you want your front desk staff to be able to print a nightly report, the today option under production and income would be allowed. But then you could make sure that the other options are blank, so a limited front desk user can only print a day sheet. However, your office manager would need access to the production and income report on more advanced levels to make sure that your practice is meeting its production goals. So let's show you what that looks like. I'm going to log in as Sarah. We had Sarah set up as a front desk limited user. You can see that if she wanted to print today's 
production and income report. She can't. But if she tries to access any other reports, she won't be allowed. But if I were logged in as an office manager, you can see that I have access to other reports. The next major section is the main toolbar, which includes your communication log, your email button so you can email patients, and the task list. Since this section is predominantly for patient communication, this section is typically allowed for both front and back office users. Now we're getting into the module section of the permissions list. You can see the appointments, family, account, and other modules that you see over here on the left-hand side. If you don't have a check mark in this box, then it will not allow anyone in this user group to access this module. For example, if you don't want any of your back office users creating or editing appointments, you can make sure this box is unchecked or vice versa, if you don't want any particular staff from the front office accessing the chart module. Let me show you what this looks like with Sarah's current security settings. So right now we have Sarah that is restricted from accessing the chart module. If she's logged in with her own user information, if she were to click on the chart module, it would tell her that she doesn't have access. You also have date restriction capabilities. There is a difference between an admin user and a manager level user. Typically admin is for the doctor or practice owner. The admin should have the rights to do everything the software is capable of. The manager may have certain rights, but with limitations. For example, maybe date limitations. Many of your editing permissions, um, like claim sent edit, insurance payment, or patient payment edit, they have date level permissions. So if a staff member makes a mistake, you can give your manager, let's say three days or seven days, to log in and correct it. But if the mistake is more than you know, a week old, then it would require an administrator to log in to make the correction. For the lock date, you can also set it based on a specific date so that if you don't want anyone to change any information entered prior to, let's say, January 1st, 2018, then only information entered after this date will be able to be edited. Now, please note that you can only use one lock type, either date or number of days. The second option is the one that's most commonly used on the group level. Setting permissions in this manner is your greatest protection against things like embezzlement because if an honest employee incorrectly enters a patient payment, like entering the wrong amount or accidentally entering the payment under the wrong patient account, then they shouldn't be afraid to tell the manager and have them make the correction. Now, if the office manager is on vacation um, or out of the office an extended period of time, the employee that made the mistake should also be able to tell the doctor about it and have them log in so the correction can be made. The next sections are typically geared toward back office users. And likewise, you can uncheck the front office modules and only give back office users access to the chart and treatment plan modules. The Manage module, with the exception of running a backup, is also typically reserved for the office managers. Depending on the level of permissions a particular group has, sometimes it may be easier for you to click the Set All button, then individually uncheck boxes for permissions you may want to restrict. For example, if you have a staff member that can create data entries, but you want to limit their ability to edit, you can just uncheck the edit boxes.
Once you have established the different groups for the types of users you think you'll need for your practice, you'll be able to add any users as needed. You can click on the Add User button from the main security setup screen, or you can bypass the main security screen, and from the setup menu, you can click on Add Users from the security submenu. User ID automatically is assigned by Practice Web. The name field is what you'll type in so this user can be recognized on the initial login screen. Here, you can also assign what permissions group this employee will be connected to. You should also make sure their name is highlighted so they're connected to the time card security. When you have the employee's name properly connected to the user login, this means that employees can't clock in or out for other employees. If the name of the user being added is not a doctor, there's no need to assign a provider. This is typically associated with associate doctor user settings. If you had multiple locations or are using the clinics feature, you can restrict this user from accessing information in other locations by clicking on the clinics tab and then highlighting only the clinic or clinics that they will have access to. To create a password, just click on the password button. Make sure that as an administrator, you create a strong password, and this should only be set up by the doctor or practice owner. By setting up an admin password, then it will force the login screen to show up when you initially launch Practice Web. For HIPAA compliance, it is important that you make sure each employee has a secure password that only they know. And it's very important that they never share their password. If you want to make sure that your staff are not sharing passwords, you can periodically put a check mark in the require password reset. So the next day when the employee comes into work, when they try to log in, it will ask them to create a new password. If an employee forgets their password, the admin can log in and assist them with recreating that password. If an employee is no longer at the practice, you can put a check mark in hidden and they'll no longer show on the initial login screen. Back at the main security screen, depending on the size of your practice and your team, you can filter through the user list by if they're employees or associates, and you can also filter by user group so if you want to view your back office users or your front office users, and you can also search by employee name. Maybe there is a specific employee that is in question and you want to see what they currently have access to and what they don't, you can search by their name and see what they're allowed to do based on the check boxes you see here on the right. Lastly, we're going to talk about global permissions. Everything we discussed before was based on group level that can affect individual users or groups. The global permissions affect all users. You can change your global permissions at any time by clicking on global permissions in the upper left corner of the security setting. As we discussed at the beginning of the tutorial, it is important to have individual users set up for time card security. In order to avoid having employees clock in and out for each other, you need to make sure that time card security enabled is checked. If you want to prevent an employee from adjusting their own time cards, then you can check users cannot edit their own time card, and this will prevent an employee from wrongfully adding hours to their time clock. An important aspect of protecting your practice from non-employee access is to have your Windows operating system automatically log off after a period of inactivity. Many people refer to this as sleep mode. 
So if your IT professional has set up your computers to automatically log off after a certain period of inactivity, and if you forget to log out of practice web, and let's say you walk away from the computer, when you come back and you log into Windows and try to open practice web, then it will automatically show the login screen and make you log back in again. Just a couple of settings down this screen, you can see that you can also set Practice Web to log off automatically without closing your entire Windows. So if you don't necessarily want to log out of everything and have your computer go into sleep mode, but you do want to protect your patient data, you can have Practice Web close after 10 or 15 minutes of inactivity so it'll automatically show the login screen again. If you want your employees to set up a password that is more than just three or four characters for their protection, then by putting a check mark in both the passwords must be strong and strong passwords require special characters box, Practice Web will require a combination of alphanumeric characters and special punctuation. If you want to increase security, the manual login would require the employee type both their name and their password rather than just picking their name from the list and then typing the password. Domain login is not commonly used for typical single practice settings. But if you have multiple locations sharing one database, then your IT professional can help you enter the information required in this field. We discussed group level lock dates earlier. Typically, on the group level, you'll use lock days, so employees like your office manager can make changes as necessary to keep your patient accounts accurate. But to protect your practice, you can set a global lock date so that any information entered prior to the date here cannot be changed by just anyone. Just be mindful that if you want to maintain a lock date, you do have to periodically come back and update or change the date each year under global update settings and just change this field. Be sure to click OK if you want to save any changes here. This concludes our tutorial on the security setup in Practice Web. If you have any questions, please call our support team at 800 845-9379, option 2, or you can send an email to support at practice-web.com.